So I'm not sure if any of you guys are able to uh, uh, to go from VF equal to VR to this equation. Any any success? Uh, looks like you guys never tried, but that's OK. You can do it on your own time. Make sure you understand how to reorder the, the terms of, of this equation and able to this one. And Sorry, you know, I, 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 did, I didn't try it because I'm, I'm a little lost with this right now and it's going to take me some time to get sorted in my brain and I had to get some cookies. Oh, uh, sure, no problem. Anybody, uh, anybody else try to solve the problem? Are you guys following? How did I come up with this equation? Don't look yeah. at this equation right now. You have to go back and look at individual. What is VF and what is VR? You have to start from here. I know the equation. This equation it looks scary, but it starts way here. OK, so you have to start from here and work your way down. Anyway, so what I did is I simply did some math. I solved for D. I found D is equal to 0.5 meter. I need to remind you if you decided to go the opposite way, for example, you decided to go with Newton meter, and which means the 1.24 will stay the same, the 500 will stay the same. So, which means you're you're saying I want to make my equations, will make sure everything is in Newton millimeter. So you don't have to do this step. Huh? So this was step will just disappear, and uh, for example, like that. OK, and you will live with this equation. However, when you go to this one here. This equation here, so you can you need to know that everything here it has to be in also Newton millimeter. And what does it mean? It means three by three is meter. So you have to say three thousand times three thousand. This point five and this point five here, it has to be millimeter. So it will be five hundred and five hundred. And finally, your KBA has to be also in, in MBA. So you have to divide this 306 by 1000. It is up to you. You want to work in meter or millimeter. That's up to you. If you decide to work in millimeter, guess what? Your equation will be the, the those factors will be different and your D will be 500. OK, so be careful. Uh, you just have to be consistent. Huh? So don't change one equation. Forget about the other. Now here we go. So oh, here we go. What I did is I there was a bending. I remember when I decided what was my V sub C. Do you remember this? I said it cannot be estimated for now. It cannot be estimated for now. Can I now estimate the third equation after I knew the D? Yes, you can. So what I did is just to ensure that everything is OK. I went back and what I did is I uh, Re-estimate the third equation only. Those are the same. I, those are the same from the previous step. The only one which is new is this one. So uh, four constant. That's alpha sub s, and then the d is 0.5, and then if you times d plus t, it will give you your v sub c from this equation is equal to. Now let me ask you: Are we okay or not okay? We're OK. Yeah, because what all my calcs was based on 1.24 as minimum of the number, but it's still the 1.24 is still the minimum of the three numbers. So my V sub C is still uh, 1.24. It means everything I have done so far is correct. Just in case, which uh, it's rarely happened, that if this number is less than 1.24, let's say 1 MBA, guess what? You will have to go again to this part here and use instead of 1.24. Instead of 1.24, then you will use one here and re-estimate the D. And it is not happening in this example. So ha what happens here now? I know the D, I know the D, and then from the D, remember the D is the effective, the depth of the footing. However, in this step, I was trying to see, OK, what is the thickness of the footing? So 500, so that's 500, this is the D. And then remember, in all the footing, the cover is always, I want to hear it. In all the footing, the cover 75. value is equal to 3 inches, 75 mil. And then I'm using 25M 
and that's uh, said in the beginning of the problem, use 25 M for reinforcement. Then I got here 587 and we never built anything 587.5. So typically I would go to 600. But here is a comment. So you guys know that uh, how we build the footing is we excavate and sometimes the excavator is not really perfect. It doesn't make an even surface. And that's why if you don't have even surface, I would recommend to go a little bit higher. In this example, I went for 650. Why? I already wrote it here. I said it's a good practice to round up and put some extra and for some side condition such as uneven ground. Because if you have uneven ground, and you have some chairs uh, for the three inches, maybe you end up with one side less than uh, three inches. OK, now what happens next is it's fun because from this point on, it is what you've seen in my class for the last few months. OK, but before we do that, uh, there is something here which I was trying to prove for you that uh, uh, again, it's kind of finding what is actual V, uh, v, uh, v sub C. OK, remember I went with the equation, give me 0.5 while Tahir chose different than 0.5. OK, so what happens here is I uh, from the actual D, which is uh, sorry, actual H, I 650 and that's my final choice. I went back and I found what is my actual D. So I subtract my cover and then half bar and then I got my actual D. It is 562.5. And then because of the actual D, I just simply went back and I use my V small sub C. This is a stress, but the stress here is in uh, is in KBA in KBA. And uh, this is four plus T plus D. If you remember the B node for a square column, uh, this rectangle here is the B node for a square column. And then finally multiply by D one more time, and which means my capacity is 2960. OK, how about my VF? Nothing in you. You're going to use here 305.5, which is a soil uh, reaction uh, stress. 3 times 3 minus uh, uh, d, uh, 0 0.5 plus D squared. OK, which is remember what is this part here? It is the area of the black square minus the area of the red square. The difference is now I know the D so I can find exactly how much is my VF and why it's safe because simply the VC is more than the VF. OK. Now, before I proceed, I want to make it clear and I want everyone to, to respond to me, please. I'm going to give you a question and please respond to me. So in this problem here, the D, when I started my problem, the thickness of the, the footing was not given. The thickness of the footing was not given, and that's why we went this way. Huh? Thickness is not given, so I cannot find the third equation. I got the first and second, found the minimum, and then found what should be the D that makes my VR equal to my VF. Here is my question. What if? the thickness of the footing was given to me. Do I have to go this way? If the thickness is given to me, first of all, if the thickness is given to me, can I estimate the three of them? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can. Great. Thank you so much. If you if the if the H is given and from the H you can find the D looks like you can find the three equation and because you know the three equation, then you can find what is V sub C, the little V, huh, which is a stress. And it's not for now, huh? it is final. It's not for now, it's final. So if that's it, that's if the H is given. Now, let me ask you, if the H is given, are you going to make an equation to find the D? No. No, so I'm asking you, what would you do? What would you do if the H is given? Would you simply, can I, I mean, t t ask, I'm gonna ask you, please say yes or no. If the H is given, do you think I can cross this part here and I can cross this part here and I can simply also cross this part here and then finally go to this part. Yes. Is that clear for everyone? If the H is not given, then you follow my example in the, in the slides. 
However, if the H is given, please do not find the D. Do not do any, any of that right away. Please check it just like follow here. OK. Now uh, let's go to here, which is, as I said, is going to be fun because simply there is absolutely from this point on, there is nothing new because we have done the two ish here, which I introduced for you today. From this point on, I need to go ahead and make sure that my footing is safe in one way here. I need to uh, pick the number of or area of steel that makes my uh, uh, footing safe in bending. Now, anybody remembers how we do a one way shear design? I think by now you remember. So I'm going to do it uh, a little bit quicker here. We need to find the D sub V, which is the effective depth for the shear, which is, if you remember, it is the greater of greater of 90% of the D or 72% of the H. And I found the number here. It is 506. And you know what? To be honest, uh, I can simply say 500 because this just will make my life super hard in math. Doesn't mix like doesn't matter those six millimeter because you will see as soon as I turn this five uh, like five um, 500 mil, it means it means here is my 0.5 meter. Now, how can we find the VF? Uh, you, you know what? To be honest, I would please uh, quickly go back to uh, this this uh, uh, slide here. And this slide here would tell you would tell you what you should do. So let me ask you, what is the total dimension of your footing? Anybody remember from here to there is how much? Is that three by three? three by three, so that's three thousand, huh? So that's three meters. Three, three meters. Okay. Sorry. So this is three meters. Okay. Does anybody remember what are the column dimensions? Like from here. So there. It's the D plus uh, T. 0. No, 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 5. no, the column dimension, the column dimension. I'm not referring to anything else. Column dimension yes. is 0. 0. 0.5. OK, how about how about the DV? Did we just found the DV? Yeah. Which is just 0. 0. 0.5 again. 5. OK, yeah. 5 again. OK, now. Now, guess what? Really what you have to do to find the VF is you need to find this area here, I will make it clear. I will make it uh, in yellow, say in yellow. OK, if you find this area here multiplied by the soil pressure, then you will get the force trying to shear uh, the critical section. OK, remember the critical section is here at distance DV from the face of the column. You can tell it is pure, pure uh, geometry, which means what should be this dimension? which is from here to there. Not very difficult. Can you do that? So half of the footing is 1.5. We take half of the column. So 1.25 minus 0 0.5 by 0 0.25. And 0 also 0 we take the right. DV. So guess what? End up this number is, I think, 0 0.75. Would you agree? Yeah. OK, now what is the other dimension of this area? Like which is from here. To there, what do you think? It's isn't a square. It's yeah, it's meter. a square. Yeah, it's three meter by three meter. So finally, if you multiply three meter times 0 0.75 meter times 306, which is the soil reaction, this will give you the VF. This is the force is trying to shear the critical section. Okay, uh, so it's it's over there, and this force here. This is exactly what I did on the plan view, but I showed you more explanation. So this is the three meter, and this is half of the half of the footing minus half of the column minus the DV. So we get here 687. Now this is the force, the VF. Now how much is my VR, which is VC, because I have no stirrups, nothing in you. Let's do it. So 0.65 times lambda, which is one times square root of f prime c, and then times Beta, when I'm going to tell you what is beta and why, Taher did it 0.152, but then multiply by dv, multiply by 3000, which is the width of your slab. And then finally, I divide by 1000 to turn everything into kilonewton. Are you guys following? I'm going to explain for you. 0.152, huh? Okay. But I'm asking you, 
Do you know why it's 3,000? The width of the slab trying to resist the shear is 3,000 mil. Okay, now why 0.152? You need to remember how did we find the beta? So do we have significant tension force? No. Does my slab is very slim? And remember, the limit for slab is a 350 mil, huh? 350 mil. Our slab here is 650 and means exceeds those limit like more than 350, which means I need to go to 11. 0.3.6, if you remember, huh? sorry, 11.3.6.3, okay? And then uh, we have here, uh, do we have minimum reinforcement? Minimum stirrup? That's a slab. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. no stirrups at all. Guess what? Here is the final, your beta, that's the final, your beta equals to 30 over 1,000, 1,000 plus dV, which is 506, and this is where you get 0 0.52, huh? So this is how I got the beta of uh, of uh, uh, 1.152. Now you can see, are we safe or unsafe? Let me ask you, safe or unsafe? Safe. Safe. My slab or footing can take and resist up to 750 by the concrete only without stirrup, while the force is trying to shear the critical section is 687, which means we have extra, even extra capacity. Now let's move on to the last part, which is now we know that the thickness I chose and make my footing safe in two-way shear, make it make my footing safe in one-way shear. Finally, let's go ahead and find how much area of steel we need to make my slab safe in bending. Not super science. Watch this. Now, if you want to find the moment that we're trying to design for, let me go back to this guy here. OK, so this guy here, where do you think the critical section is? So I should should I find the moment under the center of the of the column or should I find the moment at the face of the column? For example, should I do the moment here? Let's get rid of this guy. Should I find the moment here at the face of the column? Like so. Or should I estimate the moment at the center of the column? We discussed this, I think, last class. If you remember last class. Take the moment at the center of the column. No, 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 no. We, if you remember last class, it is at the, the face of the wall, at the face, face of, of the, the wall. And here also we do it at the face of the column. Now, how can we find the moment at the face of the column? Watch this, please. So I'm going to multiply the soil pressure, soil pressure. So it's the Q, huh? Multiply by the area. I'm not sure if I can do that here. I can do that here. So the area goes from here to there, to there, to there, to there. Okay, I'm probably going to color it, huh? So if I multiply the soil pressure times this area, what do I get? Soil pressure is kilo newton per meter square. If I multiply the soil pressure times meter square, which is the area of the yellow, what do you think? Force, you get the force. Force, what do you think? Where is this force? Where is acting? Where is acting? At the vertical direction. It's acting the vertical. here, is acting here vertically, and it's at distance, which is simply, uh, let's find some numbers. Huh? So we know that this dimension from here to there is how much? This is the 3,000, huh? or three meters, three meters. Okay, so this is the width of your, of your footing, and now, let me ask you, what is this dimension? Can anybody help me with this dimension? Look at the geometry. The total, the total width of, uh, length of your uh, footing is three meter, and my column is, my column 0. is, isn't it? Is one point five. One point two five. It is yeah. half of the footing minus half of the column. Half yeah. of the footing minus half of the column. So one point five minus half of the column is is point two five. So here we have 1.25. If I multiply the 3, I'm going to write it here. If I multiply the 3 times 1.25 times 306, what do I get? That uh, kilonewton. That's force, huh? And what is the lever arm of this force? It's very simple. It's 1.25 divided by 2. 
Hopefully this is clear. And that's exactly what you see here on my slide. So I estimated the moment for you. It is 305, which is the soil pressure, multiplied by the three, that's the width, multiplied by 1.5 minus half of the column, squared divided by two. I got how much? 716, and I'm sorry, there is a mistake. Okay, here, so the mistake is the units are kilo newton meter. Huh? So this is a moment, that's not a force. Please take a note. This is, this is not a force. This is a moment, kilo newton meter. Now, once, how can we do the design? It was a long shot because we finished the beam design and slab design probably a month ago. Hopefully you still remember how we do the design. And please, in the final exam, don't ask me and say, Tahir, you said that the final exam is not cumulative. Because some of you will say this is bending design. I don't know. You have to, to you have to remember how we design because maybe in the final exam there is a question on the spread footing, and you can see there is a little bit of lecture design. Okay, at the very end. So the K, the K are uh, very simple. You divide the moment divided by the B D squared. And remember, what is the B? What is the width that resisting the bending moment? 3000. And then what is the D? This 537.5. And uh, I need here to explain for you why this. OK, let me tell you what's the detail of 537.5. OK, so I'm going to say D here equal 650. What is 650? H. Great, thank you so much. Minus? I'm going to say here minus, minus 75. What is 75? Cover. Cover, thank you. Thanks. Minus cover, that's cover, thank you. And then plus 25 plus 25 over 2. And that's the only time I will do that. Okay, guys, here two layers of rebar, two layers of rebar, two layers, huh? One layer of rebar is going into one direction and the other layer is going perpendicular to the first layer. Now, which one is critical? Which one is critical? Which one has less lever arm? The top layer, huh? the top layer. So what you see here is the effective depth for the top layer. So 650 minus 75, the cover, minus the bottom layer, that's not stirrup, huh? that's the bottom layer, minus half of the ball. And this will give you here a 537.5 millimeter. Please take a note. Now, what you have to do is you find the K, and I still have it open here. So, this, do you still remember this table? Yes, sir. Okay, now, because you have the table and you the K is 0.83, so what you do is you go here on 25 MBA, and then you go here after in between 0.8 and 0.9, and what do you think? How much should be my row, my reinforcement ratio? Interpolate. Can you do something it, it, quick without like exact number? I did it quick because look at this. If my K is equal to 0.83, it means it's one third. Huh? It is one third between 0.8 and 0.9. So one third here is 0.01. So the reinforcement ratio is 0.25. And that's what you see here. The reinforcement ratio is 0.25. And once you know the reinforcement ratio, what you have to do is you simply multiply the reinforcement ratio, multiply the width of the beam, that's 3000, multiply by the effective depth of the beam, which is this number here. So we get here 4031 millimeter square. Remember, same as a slab, we have to make sure that the slab has area of steel more than the minimum. So let's look at the minimum. The minimum is 2 per thousand multiplied by the area gross. And the area gross is? It is B times H, so 3,000 times 650. We got here 3,900. Are we okay? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we have here 4,000, and the minimum is 3,900. It means this will make me above minimum. Now, finally, what you have to do is find the spacing. Find the spacing. So the width of your footing is 3,000. We need an area of 4,031, and the and the area of every 25M is 500, so this will give you a 372, which means it's a 25M 
at 350 millimeter on center. Remember, also same as a slab, the maximum spacing between the the, uh, the bar is, if you don't know, it's over here in a in a two way slab. 1.4 times H times. It is H. here. It is here. The spacing is here. So 3H or 500, our H here is so big. So if you multiply 3 times 650, this will give you a huge number. Remember, you cannot exceed 500. And are we OK? Let me show you. Are we OK now? Yes, we are OK. 25 M at 350 on center. That is OK because we're below the 500. And then finally, you will see uh, if you turn this into how many bars, we need 825 M each way. Remember this name? each way because we have two layers of rebar there is no main and secondary both of them they are main huh? and finally let's look at the details let's look at the details here and uh, so you can see here i'm providing two layers one layer going into this direction and the other layer is on top of it perpendicular to it 650 that's thickness the weight is 300 we have clear cover of 75 mil and you can see here we have a 25 m each way each way now how can we connect the column on top of this footing we add something called dowels and those dowels we typically go down and bend them like a kind of l shape or starters sometimes call them starters how many do we need look at the how i wrote it it is column dowels to match column reinforcement. We match it by number and by diameter. For example, if this column has, uh, let's say, 625 uh, M, so the, the, those guy here will also have to be 625 M. If those are 825 M, so those starters or dowels will have to be the same number, same diameter. Okay, now that is this is how we detail this bar. Finally, does anybody remember this disclaimer from yesterday? Please take your time, read it. You will find this disclaimer of under every cross section that has a footing. We need to say native, undisturbed soil, free of organic materials with minimum allowable soil bearing capacity of 250. Remember, it's not constant. It is whatever I assume in my design, I have to put it here. And then finally, to be field verified by geotechnical engineer on site also something you will see uh, probably you will see you will show here uh, ground level and then also you need to show here the minimum foundation level huh? so for example you'll go here and you will say for example 1200 uh, millimeter minimum now this is what I wanted to say in, in footing. Uh, if you think I went very fast, is only because what you see in most is not brand new. What you've seen here, the only thing which is new is where we talked about two-way shear. Does anyone have a question for now? Okay, so 